Yesterday, I got curious. I was curious to see if candlestick patterns and strategies from reputable online websites like investopedia.com actually worked in real markets. So with that curiosity in hand, I went ahead and Googled one of my favorite candlestick patterns, which is the hammer candlestick. And sure enough, investopedia.com was the first link to pop up on the screen. I clicked the link and I'm gonna shorten this definition for you. Investopedia.com sees a hammer candlestick as a candlestick that happens after a price decline. The hammer candlestick itself is the signal candle and it has a wick or shadow that is two times the size of the real body of the candle and that candle must be followed by what they call a confirmation candle so with this information in hand i set out to place my first trade using the investopedia hammer candlestick pattern on the pound dollar five minute chart and this is what happened all right guys we just placed a trade here based on this exact replica of the investopedia hammer candlestick i'll point this out to you and also let you know how this specific trade actually played out I'll see you in just a second. All right, guys, so just like that, we have now hit targets. And now I want to talk to you about exactly why we decided to enter on this exact trade. So that was incredibly surprising that the very first time I traded this, it ended up making a profit. But I know as a professional trader that one trade can't tell you how well a strategy is going to perform. So with that in mind, I tested 10 years of data using the same exact rules taught here on Investopedia. I, I tweaked them a bit, so it's a little bit different than this, but not by much. And in this video, I'm gonna show you the results of those tests and I'm gonna show you the exact strategy. So if that sounds interesting, if that's something you're looking forward to, go ahead and click the subscribe button down below the video to the right hand side to be alerted when we come out with new videos each and every week. Click that like button for me to help out with the YouTube algorithm. And I will see you on the other side of the intro and disclaimer. Welcome back traders. So first off, this video is in no way associated with or sponsored by Investopedia. This is just something I was curious about. And after doing the research I did and the testing I did, one, the results blew me away. And two, that made me want to share it with all of you. So what I'm going to do right now is go ahead and give you a walkthrough of everything we're going to go over in this video. Starting with the beginning is going to be me showing you the rules that I tweaked a little. So they have a clear definition of what a hammer candlestick is. I did not tweak very much about that, but in the first part of this video, I'm gonna show you the exact rules I'm using for this strategy in terms of what I'm looking for before trading this hammer candlestick that Investopedia describes and how I'm trading it, stops and targets, entries, all of that will be told to you in the very first part of the video. After that, we're gonna take a look at the results of that 10 year test I did that again, literally blew me away. And then we're gonna take a look at a few examples on the charts so that you have a clear understanding of this so that hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have everything you need in order to take this strategy, test it, and decide if it's something you wanna include in your arsenal of trading strategies, entries, whatever it may be. So let's go ahead and dive in and get started with what it is that we're looking for. Well, Investopedia themselves said that a hammer candlestick, the first thing they needed to see was a move down because they wanted to see a price price descending right before the hammer candlestick which makes sense a hammer candlestick is a reversal pattern so our first rule in this case is going to be that we need one candle at least pushing down and i know this is one of the rules i tweaked i know one candle is not much but in situations like this it sucks not to be able to get an entry well this would have lost but it sucks not to be able to get an entry just because it's not on the very bottom of a swing low. And through my testing, I noticed that it didn't really affect the accuracy all that greatly. So for a move down, all we're looking at for a move down is at least one red candle. One red candle is going to count as a move down for us. Let me show you an example of that. Okay, so here's a situation where we have one red candle pushing down, followed by a hammer candlestick, followed by our confirmation candle. And let me explain all of those to you right now. This is as good of time as any. So right now, what we have is the market pushing up, then we're pushing down, we have one red candle, and this is what we're using for the Investopedia version of price declining. I know it's only one candle, but trust me, throughout the testing that I did, this is what worked best. So we have one red candle pushing down, and then we have a hammer candle, a lower shadow that's at least twice the size of the body of that candle. And I'm going to give you a full definition of that that makes finding these candles extremely easy in just a second. And then 
we have a confirmation candle and I'm going to define that confirmation candle right now as well. So first off, what are we looking for in terms of a hammer candle? What are we going to use for the real definition of a hammer candlestick pattern? According to Investopedia, the real body of the candle needs to be small and the lower shadow needs to be at least twice the size of that. So what I see that as is that the upper body of the candle, whether it's green or red, must close within the top 33.3% of the full candle. The easiest way to do that is find the Fibonacci tool on your platform. Go to adjust the Fibonacci tool and put 33.3 as one of the levels your Fibonacci tool shows you. Click OK. Once you've done that, and I'll actually make this a little bit thicker so it's easier to see. Once you've done that, you will have a way to tell every single hammer candle based on this definition. So what this does is takes away all the confusion about what is a hammer candle. Right now, the rules that we have for a hammer candlestick is it can be whatever color. It doesn't matter if it's red or if it's green. And it needs to close in the top 33.3% of the candle because we want that top part of the candle or we want the wick or the shadow of the candle to be twice as long as the top part. So altogether we have three thirds, right? And if we want two thirds of the candle to be the wick, then that means the real body of the candle must close and open in that top third. So that's exactly what we're doing with this 0.333% on our Fibonacci retracement. So again, Hey guys, I want to make sure you completely understand the reasoning behind what we're doing and this entire pattern before we move forward. So as per the Investopedia definition, we're looking for a candle that's wick or shadow is two times that of its body. So what that means if we add these together is that we have three thirds of this candlestick. We have three thirds and we need the wick to be two thirds of the candle meaning we need the body of the candle to close in the top one third. The way we break one third down into percentages is 33.3%. And that's why we're using this Fibonacci retracement. We're pulling it from low to high, meaning we're pulling it for the entire candle like so. And when we do, we can see that this candle has a body that is within the top one third of the entire candle. And that's the reason we're using the Fibonacci retracement in this way in order to identify and objectively define a hammer candlestick. So hopefully that made sense. Now we're gonna jump back over to some real charts and take a look at some more examples. The way to make this super simple is to grab a Fibonacci tool and every trading platform has this and on almost every trading platform, you can adjust the levels on TradingView. You just double click it, make one of your levels 0 0.333 and then you can use this Fibonacci retracement every time in order to define your hammer candle. And this definition is exact to what Investopedia wants to see. So let's look at one more example of an actual hammer candle on the charts right here. So here is where a lot of confusion lies when it comes to looking at hammer candlestick patterns or any other candlestick pattern. A lot of traders don't actually have rules for that pattern or an objective way to spot it. So it causes all kinds of confusion that may look like this. Uh, is this a hammer candlestick pattern? Um, is this one okay we have a long lower shadow here is this a hammer candlestick but if you don't have an actual rule for it it's impossible to be consistent you might try to trade all three of these and whether that would have worked out or not is irrelevant you need a consistent way to point it out every time so that you're not confused about when you're supposed to trade so the way we do that is with this fibonacci retracement tool at a 0 0.333 percent now you can say okay this let's look at our fibonacci is the entire body of this candle above 0.333% above our black line on a Fibonacci retracement? Yes. So with that being the case, and the only thing I did there for those of you who are new is I took the Fibonacci retracement from the low to the high of the candle. This specific candle didn't have a wick at the top. And even if it did, as long as the whole body was above 0.333%, then that would count as a hammer candlestick based on the definition we got from Investopedia. So that is a hammer candlestick. And let's look at the other ones we pointed out. Is our green candle right here a hammer candlestick? It would be subjective for most traders. They wouldn't know how to answer that. And they may start trading based on emotions or what they think the market's going to do. And that's not how you're supposed to trade. That's not how a professional trader trades. 
This case, no, this would not be a hammer candlestick. Now, what about the other example we pointed out up here? This looks a little more like a hammer, right? We have a large body up top that looks like a hammer and a wick that's looks like it might be twice as long, but how are you ever going to tell if you don't have an objective way to say whether or not this wick is twice as long as the body? Well, the objective way of doing that is with our Fibonacci retracement tool at a 0.33% retracement. And in this case, would have been a no hammer candlestick and you can see the market fell. So now that you know what we're looking for in terms of the candlestick itself, what about confirmation? Well, confirmation for me is extremely simple. I'm looking for the full version of this strategy is a price decline. I'm defining a price decline as at least one red candle, one red candle, and then a hammer is totally fine with me. The hammer being exactly by the rules we just stated. Now, as for confirmation, super simple. I'm waiting on a green candle. So if I have a hammer candle, all I need to see is a green candle afterwards. That is my confirmation candle to tell me the market's going to head higher. And that's the exact way I placed the trade on the pound dollar earlier in the video and how I tested the 10 years of data on the New Zealand dollar, the results that I'm about to share with you. I tested those just like this. So let's go over one more example here on the charts and then we'll take a look at the data itself and I'll give you a breakdown of the full strategy in terms of entries, stops, and targets. Let's go ahead and go to one more example though here on the charts. So here I have a question for you on this chart. Right here, we have a hammer candle, right? The body of this candle, and I know it's a doji, and that's totally fine, and I know that this may not be defined exactly as a hammer, but for the sake of this video, we're gonna call it a hammer. So at this point, we have a hammer candlestick, and what I want you to do is tell me if this would be an entry. The definition has been met that we have at least one red candle before the hammer candlestick for price declining. We have a candlestick in which the entire body, which is a doji, I know, but the entire body is above 0.333%. And what's next? What are we looking for after that? Would this be a trade? I hope you said no, because we would need a green candle directly following the hammer for it to be confirmation. Remember the third rule in the Investopedia definition of a hammer candlestick was confirmation. So we need to make sure we get that green candle confirmation. So let's go ahead and look at one more. Okay, so right now on the screen, I want you to tell me, can you find the actual hammer candlestick trade that we would place? Where our entry would be, is what I'm talking about. Hopefully you said yes, and hopefully you pointed out this green candle right here. Let's take a look at our rules and check them off like we would do if we were actually placing the trade. Is there more than one red candle before this hammer candle? Yes, there's two right here. And we're at the bottom of a pretty nice move down. So we've seen a decline in price for sure. Next up, is our candlestick defined as a hammer candlestick? Well, how did we define that? We took our Fibonacci retracement. We put a 33.3% on that retracement for one of our lines. And if we pull that from low up to high of this candlestick, does the entire body stay above our black line? The answer to that, of course, is yes. And finally, our third rule is that we need confirmation. Our confirmation is just a green candle. So do we have a green candle afterwards? The answer to that is yes. And for entry stops and targets, I'm gonna go ahead and explain that right here. So for an entry, it's just the close of my confirmation candle. That's what I used as an entry on the pound dollar trade and on the 10 years of testing that I did. So. We have our entry candle there. The stop loss would go below our hammer candlestick. And for a target, I did a 1.4 to 1 risk reward. And that is exactly what a real trade would look like. So going back and defining everything once more, we have that pullback or the price descending. We have price descending with one red candle. We have the hammer candlestick by our definition. And we have a confirmation candle, which is a green candle after a hammer. The stop loss goes below our hammer candlestick and our target. You can pick how you wanna do targets. I'm just showing you the way that I did them on all the testing that I did and on the pound dollar trade from earlier this morning. So now let's take a look at what like blew me away completely whenever I actually took this data, took everything that Investopedia said, tweaked it just a little bit, and what I saw in terms of the testing I did over the past 10 years on the New Zealand dollar. Let's go over that right now and take a look. I'm really excited to share this with you guys. So let's go. 
Before we go over those testing results, first I want to go over that live day trade on the pound dollar from this morning and show you what I was looking at. And now that you know the rules, I want you to help me spot it out. But speaking of day trading, I actually just posted a video called Day Trading Secrets over on Instagram. And that video is going to go over some different tricks and techniques that I use to improve my accuracy on lower time frames. If you're interested in day trading and want to check that out a little bit early, you can go over to Instagram and check that out right now at the trading channel. I'm going to post that video on YouTube in a few days. But if you want early access, it's already on Instagram. Now, let's take a look at the pound dollar. Let's go ahead and move the chart forward. And I want you to tell me if you can spot when I was ready to place that day trade. Let's go ahead and move over a couple of candles here. One candle, two candles. That looks like it could be a hammer candle, right? Let's go ahead and check it. We have our Fibonacci tool already set up. Yes, that is a clear hammer candlestick. And it's one red candle. The one red candle pullback can be the hammer candlestick. That's totally fine. But let's look again. Now we could not have entered that previous trade, right? Why is that? Because we need that confirmation candle being a green candle and we did not get that. So now we have to check one more time is this candle that just printed a hammer candle based on our rules. Yes, it is. The body of that candle, the full body closes above 33% in the top third of that candle. So with that being the case, let's move forward once more. Okay, so now we're in a position where we can what? What can we do? Can we actually place a trade right now? Well, if you're going by the rules from Investopedia and the rules that you've learned in this strategy, if you decide to test and trade it, then yes, this would be an area where you would look for an entry because we have our confirmation being this green candle. So now let's move the chart forward a bit and see what actually happened on this trade. Right there, you can see that this trade pushed up to hit our targets, which actually were at 1.35 on this day trade because there was some structure looking left that I didn't want to go above. So that was the live trade from this morning. Now let's go over the actual testing results of full 10 years of data on the New Zealand dollar. If you guys are enjoying the content so far, make sure to click that like button. And also if you like this type of thing, you like me going through the internet and finding legitimate sources with strategies and, and candlestick patterns, reading their definitions and actually testing them to see if they're legit and work in today's market. If you enjoy that, make sure to let me know in the comment section, leave some suggestions if you have them. And I'll be sure to include that in the next few videos that we produce like this. Now, in terms of the New Zealand dollar, this was tested on the daily chart. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, daily chart strategies. Most people that try to trade want to be traders that trade on like the five minute chart to try to make money as fast as possible. Just because I tested it on the daily doesn't mean you have to. You now have the tools in order to test this yourself on lower time frames. But as for the New Zealand dollar over the past 10 or so years, a little more than 10 years of data, these were the results. On the screen, you can see a bunch of red. It looks like a mess. I know that. Red and green lines, the reds are losses and orange are losses. Greens and blues are wins. That's not important. What I want to show you right now is that I'm actually, in fact, using the exact rules. So let's pick some random trades. I'm using the exact rules that I just taught you in this scenario, okay? And for this entire testing process, we have a loss right here and that will happen sometimes. We have our hammer candle right here that did close above the 0.33% or the 33.3%, excuse me, I kept saying that a lot in this video, but even though it did and we got a confirmation candle, the market decided to push down instead of up. That will happen. Remember, if we're winning even at a 60% rate, you're gonna have losses. Out of 100 trades, you're gonna have 40 losses. So that does happen, but here, on our next possible trade, we have our 33.3% hammer. Let's go ahead and look at that. Just like that, it closed the whole body of this candle is above 33.3%, so that's valid. That rule is set. Next, we need our confirmation candle. And the first rule, of course, was do we have red candles before, at least one, and we did. So now we have our confirmation candle on the green and the market pushed up. And I'll give you one more example of this before we look at the results on a spreadsheet. Here we have a red candle showing us a pullback, showing us decline in price uh, on some level at least, which is totally fine with me. We then have a candle that the body closed within the top one third of the candle. Stop loss will be below the swing low. Targets up here, we actually could have got a 1.76 on that trade specifically, but that's a few random trades to show you that exactly what I taught you in this video is how I tested this. Now what I wanna do is go over to a spreadsheet and actually show you how it performed over a little over 10 years of data here on the New Zealand dollar. So let's do that. 
Here we are on the spreadsheet, and I did not feel like typing in 1.4 on all these. It was just easier to type in one. So I just did this at a one-to-one -one risk reward ratio, but you can see using exactly what I've taught you in this video and honestly using almost a replica strategy to what's on investopedia.com, this strategy provided an edge over the market. This is what blew me away. It provided over 60% in terms of winning percentage. That's incredible for a strategy you can learn by reading something on Investopedia. And what I really wanna talk about in this video in a second, I'm gonna talk about some of the ways that you can increase the accuracy, increase your risk reward, make this strategy a better strategy. And as I said, you don't have to trade it on the daily chart. You can get a lot more trades if you go and test this on lower time frames, even day trading time frames, to see if it's profitable on certain currency pairs. And if it is, then you've gotten a profitable strategy pretty much from Investopedia and my help in explaining it. You're welcome, just kidding. So. In this case, what I really want to go over right now is the fact that the strategy is not the issue. You're not having a problem in trading because you don't have a profitable strategy. What did I just prove? I just proved that you can go read shit on Investopedia and create a strategy that gives you an edge over the market based on what you read on a free website. So if that can give an edge, if it's that easy to get an edge over the market, which is what we want as traders and that's how every professional trader creates profit, then why is it that 95% of traders fail? Well, it actually happens to be risk management. You see right here, this says risk per position and discipline along with expectations that are way too high. You may be looking at 60% and a 35% gain over 78 trades as terrible. And if that's the case, your expectations are super high. If you think that you're gonna find a strategy that wins 90% of the time and makes a thousand percent a month, then your expectations are too high. And what I mean by that is that if you're starting with a thousand dollar account and you think you're going to have $10,000 in that account within the next month, week, year, that's insanity because you'll have to use so much. Your risk management will be terrible if you can accomplish that. And you're going to blow your account. If you try to trading is a slow game. It's you're investing, even though you're day trading, you're not day trade. If you want to gamble, let me, let me start like this. If you want to gamble, then this video wasn't for you. Go do whatever you want to. If you're just planning to gamble and lose your account anyway, then go do it. That's, that's totally fine. What you do with your money is your decision. But if you want to actually create a professional trading career and a profitable trading career, you better get risk management in place. And you better learn how to become disciplined to a strategy and lower those expectations a little if you're expecting to get a Lamborghini next month from just trading. Now that I've gotten that little rant out of the way, let's talk about some of the ways you could increase accuracy, increase the amount of trades you get even. It, how could you make this strategy better? Well, what if you said, I only trade this strategy in overbought and oversold markets? You put an RSI on the screen. Would that increase accuracy? More than likely. Over sold in this case, since we're looking at hammer candles. What if you said, I only trade this type of candlestick pattern when it bounces off a moving average or bounces off support or resistance? Do you think that would increase the, the potential of this strategy? Of course it would. It may take away from the amount of trades you're in, but on lower time frames, you may need to do that so that the accuracy of this pattern goes up. So on a five minute chart, you may not just want to trade every time there's a hammer candlestick with a confirmation candle. You may want to wait till that's at support or resistance or wait till the market's oversold or overbought before you do something like that. So those are just some ideas of how you could actually increase the profitability of this strategy. If you enjoyed this, then I think you would love a little more advanced training. And we have that available right now. We've had a few graduates out of the EAP training program. That link is in the top of the description. So if you'd like to join us in the VIP program, if you'd like a mentor, me, to help you on your journey, to becoming a professional trader, then it would be a pleasure to work with you. In that program, you will get a full training course that will teach you all of the strategies I actually use on a daily basis. You'll get three to five email alerts each and every week of the trades that I'm planning to take based on the strategies you're learning in the course, because those are the strategies that I actually trade on a daily basis. You'll have priority emails so you can always get in touch with me in case you need 
help with your trading in any way. In case you don't understand something about the course or about Forex in general, I'll be there for you to help and I'll be personally replying to your emails. That's what priority email means. And there's a few other bonuses that I can't mention at all in this video, but there is a link in the description to learn more about the program. If you're like, no, Steven, I'm not paying for education, totally fine. No worries. I was like that too at the beginning of my trading career and I don't hate you for it. You are more than welcome to hit that subscribe button and keep watching this valuable content we produce each and every week here at The Trading Channel. With that said, I hope you're trading green and continue to do so. I wish you the best of luck on all your future trades and I will talk to you in the next video. Don't forget, there's a video somewhere beside my face that will be beneficial to you as well. And also leave us a comment below if you have any suggestions on future videos like this one. Click that like button, follow us on Instagram for early release videos and I'll see you next time. See you soon.